Good morning, good morning. Just waiting here for a tractor. A lot of tractors go up and down this road in the morning. Ah, oh, that's my old mate with a hedge trimmer on the back. See the hedges are pretty nicely trimmed now. I think uh, it's gone the 1st of March. And I think after the 1st of March you're not allowed to trim hedges unless they face the road. Anyway, how are you? All right. What do you think of my haircut? Oh, a bit short. That's what Mrs. Angry said. She said, I can see your skull. Never mind. Grows back, doesn't it? That's my sort of philosophy on haircuts is that, you know, you don't want to worry about them too much, you know. Just, uh, the barber says to you, you know, how do you want it done? I'm like, they they, <laughs> they say things like, you know, what number? What number do you want? I said, I don't know. I, I was born in an era where hair didn't have numbers. You just used to get it cut with a pair of scissors. And uh, so I don't know what number it is. Oh, okay. I said, can't you see more or less, you know, how it's cut? That was cut last time. He said, I didn't cut it last time. trouble is I've gone for a barber who's like a younger younger chap and must be in his 20s and he's a bit too trendy do you know what I mean he's like uh, super trendy and doesn't really and he's in a, a village or a town small town which has got a load of old boys like me in it so but my, I'm like you know I don't care it's like parting on the left always have had a party on the left because I'm right handed so when I started combing my hair you just naturally tend to comb it to the right more than the left and so you get a party on the left oh blimey they don't care do they he's going through that with a cigarette in her left hand And then uh, straight across the back, and uh, and off the over the top of my ears, you know. And then basically, uh, do what you like, because at the end of the day, if I I don't know whether I like it or not, I wait till I get home and see what Mrs. Angry says about it. Uh, she she gives me the feedback, and then uh, if she says, "Oh no, that's rubbish," then. Uh, I'll just let it grow out and have another go. Who cares? So, I hope you're well. Okay. I'm going straight into work today. I've got a busy day today. Oh, I hope I've got the phone. I think I've got the phone. I've started, I've come up with this new way of doing things which involves me doing things when they need to be done. So for example, I was looking after the surgery phone yesterday, and so I got a few phone calls, but then when I finished getting phone calls, oh God, Bennett, what's going on here? Someone's poor old Austin getting towed. Uh, I am... Um, I then think, right, I'll, I'll have to put that back in my bag to take it back to work. And then what happens is I always get distracted and I come to work and I think, oh, I've, I've forgotten something. I know I've forgotten. I feel like I've forgotten something. And sure enough, I have. It's to, I've forgotten to put the phone in my bag. So now what I do is if I think, oh, I'll need to put that phone in my bag, I literally get up and I say, no, go and do it. Literally do it. Even if it means that, you know, I'm worried that I might have to then get it out of the bag again for something or whatever but everything's in the right sort of uh, is done so that if if I just come to work then everything that's supposed to come to work with me has come to work with me in my bag assuming I remember my bag so <clears throat> we had a day off yesterday on full pay as we like to do you know I, a, I'm coming up to retirement, so I want to slow down a bit. And B, I'm booked up like a week, two weeks ahead, which is ideal anyway. 
even taking the days off, so I don't care. Uh, you know, there's no point in stringing out over four and a half days what could be done in three and a half days. I know it means that you're, you know, you tend to be a bit more busy than you would be normally. But that's factoring in because of all the lab work I'm doing. You know, I've got two partial dentures on the go. I've got one uh, full full. I've got to do a try in on Monday. <coughs> And uh, you see that someone with a helmet that was a rabbit's head with rabbit's ears on it. So, you know, I do need time in between the patients to do the lab work. Um, it's no use sort of finishing at lunchtime and then doing the lab work in the afternoon. Although I have done that from time to time. Um, the best thing to do also is to try and keep everything up to date again, you know, in line with my New Year's resolution uh, that I did on the 1st of February. So for example, if, uh, you know, I need to do a retry, the thing to do is as soon as the patient's gone, take it back to the lab and and uh, change the teeth, you know, do the, re do the retry lab work straight away. And then you can then get the patient back again, can't you, pretty soon in a few days, which believe me, it's like miraculous in today's National Health Service to have uh, lab work back in less than three weeks. So what else? Uh, we are, <clears throat> I mean, I have uh, noticed that there is a big increase in demand for private dentistry. And, you know, I mean, you might say, well, you know, angry, you know, welcome to the 2010s. But, <clears throat> I mean, I've, seen dentistry over a lot of years and I've been private for a lot of time you know I first went private in 1992 I think and uh, and so I'm really just observing demand from from the private side and for a long time you know people were we didn't really get the respect or the volume or the demand that we deserved because we were competing against uh, the government that was brainwashing patients and telling them that uh, first of all the NHS dentistry was as good as anything you could get in the private sector um, and secondly uh, they'd need to be mad to pay private fees when they could get it subsidized on the health service to the same standard which, which was never true and then also um, you know the government had the the treasury the money printer so if they ever needed to uh, get themselves out of trouble by virtue of their complete lack of business know-how or uh, economics knowledge they just used to print a bit of money and, and throw it out of the problem but there's a limit to uh, how long you can give away 10 pound notes for a fiver and I think they finally run, run into the buffers, you know. You know, they say, well, they, they're kicking the can down the road in the public sector. They kick the can down the road a lot in, in the public sector. And I think in dentistry, they just finally run out of road. Hello. Here we go, Nino, Nino. We live near an ambulance uh, depot, so you get you get a lot of this almost every other day. There's an ambulance coming. The biggest problem is that things like red lights, because you're not you're not exempt from being prosecuted for driving through a red light just because you've got a big flu uh, blue uh, flashing ambulance uh, behind you. you. You're still it's still against the highway code to go through red lights, so. Although I think most people probably would and also think that they've got a reasonable defence. But there is no defence. You can't say, you know, you can't say it's in the public interest or there's some exigency that required you to go through like you needed the toilet or something. It's, <laughs> it's, it's an automatic prosecution. Yeah, so... <clears throat> You know, I mean, we're getting a lot of people uh, coming to us 
from the NHS. Um, and they were almost always, you know, it's a massive story, a massive, great, long story of disaster. So, for example, I've got an eight-year-old coming in today. It's the son of one of my patients. Um, and he has got, I think, decay in the back of his upper three, uh, of his upper E's, his upper second deciduous molars. The uh, six has come through, or is coming through, and the E's have got uh, decay, uh, literally not, not in the surface, but in the back of the tooth, and it's causing pain. So, I lost count. His mother told me how many people he, she'd taken him to, to try and get this sorted out. She'd taken him to the dentist, who said they, he wouldn't keep still enough to do an x-ray. So they sent him off to do an OPG, and the OPG um, was done at the local hospital, and then the dentist said they wouldn't take the tooth out because the OPG was blurred, and uh, referred him to a our rego, you know, our referral service. And in the meantime, she's taken him to see the doctor twice. Uh, she's taken him down A and E. Uh, she's even um, been told that uh, she wanted another X-ray done because the NHS dentist said he wouldn't take the tooth out because it's blurred, and uh, was told that they wouldn't do another one and uh, you know the, the next closest A&E was in Ashford which is about an hour away and so she might want to take him there which is you know and this is and I'm sitting there listening to this story with I mean increasingly incredulous that's the one certain thing about the NHS that I've learned is that you, it doesn't matter how bad you think it is it can always get worse this is the problem with the downfall of Western civilization. There's no stupidity too big to occur. Or to not occur. So, and she rang me and said, you know, you get, you get a lot of these phone calls like, help me, Obi-Wan. So I had to try and I had to try and calm her down because she was explaining everything to me all at once, and I and I said to her, "Look, you're overthinking this. You've got an eight-year-old who's got toothache, whether it's infection or decay or whatever, who needs to have a baby tooth out. The only question is there are two questions. One is can we get it numb, and the other one is at eight is he mature enough to sit there in the chair while I sort his problem out." And she's like, yeah, yeah, I think he, you know, he, he was expecting to have the tooth out on Monday. Uh, so I think he probably would cooperate. So then, you know, I've said he can come in after we finish work today at one o'clock. We've tacked him on the end of the session. And when, you know, when you do these things for people, they're like, oh, really? You know, why would you do that? And. I just tell her that for children we'd sort of bend the rules a bit, you know. No, well, there is no rule. There's no rule that says I have to finish at one o'clock, you know. The only rule is my rule. The only rule I've got is my nurse. She says, no, I'm going to dinner bar at quarter to two. I can't, I can't work past one. Then that's it, you know. That, that's, a, that's the problem. But assuming that all, all other things being equal with the uh, nursing, um, hopefully we can just take this D, this D out of this upper left, D out of E, out of this eight year old. But where, where it um, relates, as I said to the NHS, is that, uh, you know, you, in the early days you, people used to go private because of they bragging rights down the golf club, how much their treatment cost, or because they, you know, they're just used to they're very wealthy and used to having the best of everything. Um, and then we went through a period where 
people wanted to go a bit private, but not fully private, and that's the era when you used to have the uh, so-called independent fee scale, uh, which wasn't fully, it wasn't private, but then it wasn't NHS. Then uh, you got to the period where a lot of people said, no, I'm not gonna, I am gonna go private. And now we're getting to the stage where pretty much everyone's thinking, I'm gonna have to go private. There's still a lot of people I think who are still uh, hanging on, either because there's no way they're ever going to have the financial means to pay for anything in the private sector, and they're relying entirely on the public first, pretty much for everything probably, and um, and also those who are just institutionalised in the NHS and. Don't don't really understand that that's that's you know it makes sense. Another ambulance. People don't. Uh... You know I'm quite good when people ring up and say you know I do are you taking on NHS patients? Now first of all, first of all. I think, look, you know, you know, give them, a, give them a few points for sitting down in, in the phone and, and in front of a list of phone numbers and just ringing everybody up and finding out what the actual situation is. That's what the, the BBC did, wasn't it? And the Department of Health never, what, never dares do. Um, but on the other side, I think, look. Well, you know, okay, I don't know. It would be a waste of my time to try and ring around everybody when obviously I'm not. I'm 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 a millennial, so I'm not expected to be really hot on IT. But in fact, I would I would use the internet to for an inquiry like that. Um, and then the other thing is that you know a lot of patients go to dentists through. Uh, recommendation don't they they someone says oh so and so is a good dentist you want to, you want to go down there etc so and there's only one NHS dentist I mean there used to be over 500 in Kent and, and in East Kent now I think as far as I know there's only one and you can't get on their books by ringing them up because uh, they never answer because there's seven dentists there and they've only got one phone so you have to go down there and walk in and uh, and say I'd like to register on the NHS and they I think I think rather than have a conversation with you which might take even 30 seconds about I'm sorry you know we'll put you on a waiting list or whatever or try again next month or and get into all this whole I pay my national insurance, you know, type debate with the patients, or they just say, yeah, here's a form, pull your details in, here's a form, fill your details in, leave it with the desk, and we'll get back to you, you know. That's just the quickest way they can deal with uh, people wanting to register. And they do need to, they do uh, need people to register because they are well behind with their, uh, uh, they're well behind with the UDAs, uh, apparently. And also well behind paying the HMRC, their employees tax and national insurance contributions by the sound of it as well. So we'll have to wait and see it's run by a bloke who uh, I call Chris because they're all called Chris. <laughs> One of these blokes who. Uh, what's that? Joe Sullivan always used to say to me, you know, you can just to make yourself successful, you just get, have to get up half an hour earlier in the morning and you'll get more done in the day. And it all adds up, you know. And then if that's not enough, then get up half an hour earlier than that. 
and uh, which was, you know, I tried that, but I ended up getting up before I went to bed. So, <laughs> hello, look at this, Earthworks. This is going to be a new road, hopefully. More likely a new housing estate. So, yeah, and they all, um, they're all, um, they run seminars, don't they, on how to be successful dentists, how to make money, how to uh, increase your your patients, number of patients, how to increase your profit, etc., etc. And uh, they're all super fit. You know, they, they've all, they all look like they've been down the gym, you know, because they're so pumped. They're so full of testosterone about anyone can be a multiple practice owner in life. Uh, and <clears throat> they're telling everybody how to do it. And yet, in, in actual fact, <laughs> if you go to their practices and see how they do it, they, they do it through blatant uh, manipulation of the, of the regulations. In other words, they're doing, they're doing, they're taking all sorts of diabolical liberties with uh, the regulations that most people wouldn't. And uh, you know, the, and the, in a way, the people who take the most diabolical liberties are the ones who get away with the most. Oh God, blimey! This is going to be very different in about three months. This roundabout's going. We're gonna have a much bigger roundabout. Yeah, so the, and they're all, uh, you know, they're all, um, it's all about just paying people late, paying their labs late. Should we let this lobster out? There you go, off this couple. about uh, buying the cheapest toilet roll, uh, buying the, uh, you know, not, not buying any uh, photocopy of paper, using the cheapest computer system, paying the staff minimum wage. That's, and that's the miracle. That is the miracle. It's just like, you know, it's, there's no miracle about that, believe me. I mean, we were recently advertised a, a job. We are paying £15 an hour. We had 150 applicants, which means we can get the best. Of, and that includes everybody's working for all these other surgeries. You know, they all, they all quite happily give notice and come and work for me just because I'm paying £15 an hour. And because we've got the best, we can generate £15 an hour. Anyway, uh, I'm really booked up today, so I'm working solidly, I think, from, from about five minutes time. We've got a new patient, then another new patient at half past nine, and then this other new patient, this eight-year-old boy at one o'clock, and oh my God. So, and I'm gonna have a well-deserved weekend. But then I did have, I did have yesterday off, although I was answering the phone, so. I don't suppose you can say that that was sort of strictly off. I mean, I was on, I was on call all day to answer the phone. But you know, we got a fair bit of work out of it. It's always useful to take a phone call. The very few phone calls um, are bad news. You know, that almost always, say ninety-nine percent of all phone calls we take are worth money. They, they bring business. Hopefully, they'll bring enough business for me to be able to afford a new pair of windscreen wipers. Seeing as we're quite quickly becoming water world, and we'll all have to build an ark. Look at that. Now we've got a load more people been looking in my window, watching me take teeth out. Not long now. Anyway. Nice to talk to you. I hope you have a good day. Bye for now.